Gaetano Cipolla. Yeah. Um, and we had a conversation a few years ago in Giardini Naxos about some of Sicily's first settlers. So and this, you're seeing a lot of a this listen. for the first time. Some of this, some of this stuff that you're seeing right now is for the first time. We've been saving it for the right moment, and today is the right moment. Who do you think out of all the conquerors were the most influential on Sicily? You can, you can sort of split it between two or three uh, people who have come here. Primarily, the Greeks. The Greeks arrived right in this spot, uh, in Naxos, uh, Naxos Beach, in 734 before Christ. And f within 20 years, they founded all kinds of uh, different towns, from, from Catania to Messina, Messina, Catania, Syracuse, Ragusa, and they fanned out from their founding, eventually a hundred years later, the people from Gela founded uh, uh, Agrigento. And um, within a short period of time, basically all, all of Sicily, except perhaps the further reaches of the West, were in the hands of, of, the, of the Greeks. They were, they were not here as uh, conquerors, they were here as colonizers. Basically, they were here to stay. They, they needed a place in the sun because they probably had uh, uh, run out of space in, in Greece. And they, uh, they basically f formed a, a, beautiful, uh, a beautiful civilization right here. Uh, at one point, uh, Sy Syracuse and, uh, and uh, Agrigento were the largest towns in all of the Mediterranean, even larger than, than Athens. At one point, they even defeated La Athens. But the Greeks did come to Sicily. They did bring their civilization. They did bring uh, their philosophers. Plato came. Uh, uh, Aeschylus actually died in Jela. I don't know if you know it. Some of the plays, the Greek plays, were uh, were uh, performed at uh, at Syracuse and Agrigento and all the other places. But there is uh, one thing that people do not know: many of the great Greeks, or many of the great people that people think are Greek, are actually Sicilians. Archimedes, to give you one. Archimedes was born in Syracuse, and he died in Syracuse. Uh, so people, when people think of Archimedes, who was one of the greatest geniuses uh, uh, the world has ever known, uh, they think he's Greek. Yes, he's a Sicilian Greek. Uh, he's more Sicilian. And, and basically, Sicilians uh, came to understand that they were a new, a new people. They were not... Uh, they were Greek in culture, they were Greek, uh, their, mo their mother country was Greek, but at a certain point, at a certain point they became aware of their own identity. And they became aware that they were Sicilians and no longer Greek. In fact, at one point, uh, uh, in the battle between Athens and, and the, Greek, uh, the Greeks, uh, the local Greeks, um, one, of the, one of the things that was uh, at the sort of a peace conference that fa followed, one of the, the points, the sticking point was that the Sicilian insisted, we are neither Doric, we are neither Dorian, we are Sicilians. And that was part of, of the agreement that they had to make before they could have peace. Well, we call it Siceliots. Siceliots, uh, you know, the Ots ending is, identifies the town, or the town where they were born. So Siceliots mean people who live in Sicily. When the Spartans, the Spartan soldiers, came to Sicily, they had on their shield is it one leg, one leg turned like this. Um, when they became aware of the fact that they were no longer Greeks, they were Spartan, that they wanted to be known as Sicilians or Siceliots, instead of having the one leg that is turned, the part of the trinacria, nacria leg, they put three, three legs. And since that point, of course, that, that, that identifies uh, them as Sicilians, not Greek. So the road of culture uh, didn't travel only from one way, on the, from Greece to Sicily. It also traveled back. Uh, there were some Sicilians who actually 
taught the Greek uh, um, public speaking. It was Gorgias of Lentini who taught, uh, who actually traveled to Athens to teach people how to public speak. Uh, I can give you many other examples, but primarily the most important thing is that Sicily contributed a great deal to the mother country as much as the mother country contributed to, to the Sicilian uh, culture. So the, the two-way. I love the story about the Trinacria and where the Trinacria came from and the whole idea that when the Spartans came here and they no longer thought they were Greeks, they were in fact Sicilians, they added that extra leg. So very cool. Of course, others have different stories about the origin, but I like that one. You know, Gaetano's been my mentor for many, many years, Esther. You know, he was born right up here in the province of Messina uh, in Francavilla di Sicilia. Uh, he's also the publisher of all my books. And over the years, we have established a real bond, okay? So we've been kind of waiting for the right time to throw in vignettes. We have a lot of little vignettes of uh, Professor Chipola, and this was one of them. Yeah, we're gonna, very happy that we're going to be working with him a little bit more. The Arabs came uh, in 827 before Christ, and they landed in Mazzara del Vallo. Uh, they conquered all of Sicily. It took them quite a long time to do the whole thing. Uh, however, eventually they did conquer all of Sicily, and um, their influence is perhaps felt more on the western side because landing in Mazzara del Valle, which is on, on the tip there of, uh, of, of the western coast, southern western coast, uh, their influence was felt more there than here. I, you can, I can give you one, one very simple little thing about uh, how to actually uh, determine that influence. The Arabs changed everything. They changed the names of towns, they changed the name of, of a spring, they changed the name of, of everything. And by studying basically all the different towns and, their, and the names to see whether they, they were changed by the Arabs, you find that, let's say, 300 name places were found on the western coast and maybe a hundred on the eastern coast. In other words, their presence was, uh, their, by, by naming the things that they knew, uh, there were few, few named places of Arabic origin on the eastern coast than there are in the western coast. That tells you basically that they were less, less present here on the, west, on the east coast than they were you know, they were present. If, just if you go, if you walk out from the hotel, you will find the river Alcantara. Alcantara is an Arabic name, and Alcantara means the bridge, because the Romans had built a bridge over the river Alcantara. Uh, and they left a great, a great deal, many things uh, after that. For example, every, every city that begins with uh, Kalat, is Arabic. And Basically, I, my own opinion, uh, I, I think the Arabs had a great, great influence, and the Greeks. I don't know which one had, uh, uh, but uh, more influence, more of the two. But I would say that if you isolate two of the people who had greater, the greatest influence on the Sicilian, it would have to be the Arab, the Greeks first, and then the Arabs. And after that, of course, the Spaniards. The Spaniards were here for a long, long time, but they were not, uh, they were not, they were not here in droves like the Arabs and the Greeks. They were here, the, primarily the, the princely families who were given, were given control of Sicily, they came here and they established uh, their relationships, but they never really mingled with the people so that it's not, uh, uh, a, they did not become part of, of the Sicilian uh, people in that sense. But the Arabs and the Greeks, yes. Next, let's talk a little bit about Renaissance here in Sicily. And, uh, every country has a Renaissance, has a period of up and down. Uh, uh, it, it reaches a, its apogee at a certain point and then it falls, goes up. So it varies for different people. But uh, f the Florentines have, of course, uh, 
created their own renaissance and they had their the major eruption of, of creativity in the 15th, 16th century. But other countries have had their high period before. And if you think of the high period of Sicily, you have to start, you have to think about the Norman, the Norman domination, the Norman uh, period in Sicily where, uh, where basically, which basically put the, uh, uh, the foundation for whatever came after, after them. Uh, they, uh, the, 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 the Norman kings, together even with before uh, Frederick II, were people who loved the arts and loved everything that, that uh, the Greeks had done. They had people translate uh, various texts from the Greek into Latin and into, uh, well, basically into Latin because uh, uh, they commission these works to be done. They did, the, they did the first map of the world, basically. The Sicilians, the, the globe of the world, they called Alma, you know, uh, was done for Roger II, and you can admire it in Palermo uh, at, the, at the museum. Uh, Frederick II also was a, a man who was interested in all kinds of things, and he commissioned studies, translations from the Greek into, into Latin. Uh, they were interested in mathematics, they were interested in, in, in uh, medicine, uh, and every aspect of the world. I can give you one man, one man without whom you probably won't know who he is, uh, whose bust is in at the entrance of the city of Noto, without whom the Renaissance would almost be inconceivable. His name is Giovanni Aurispa. And Giovanni Aurispa was a book merchant. He was a, a book merchant who collected about 700 manuscripts from Greek, the Greek manuscripts. So that basically, all, practically all that we know about Greek literature was contained in these manuscripts. Uh, things that we, we know today uh, basically came, uh, became known th thanks to the manuscript that he collected. Now, if you think that the Renaissance, the Renaissance is basically a rebirth. A rebirth of what? a rebirth of the ancient classics. Uh, the Renaissance is basically a moment of imitation of the ancient classics, Greek and Latin. If you don't have the text that you want to imitate, if you don't have the material stuff, what do you imitate? Renaissance ceases to be without the things to imitate. Renaissance is basically an imitation of class classic works. Uh, and you can put that in every aspect of, of the learning. Uh, sculpture, uh, painting, uh, literature, uh, history, all of the things were all of the things were affected by this idea of imitation. When Machiavelli, for example, wrote The Prince, or when Machiavelli wrote the, his, other, uh, his other works, he was basically suggesting that we need to imitate the ancient, the great ancient people who taught us these things. And he gave examples, you know, uh, di different examples uh, in every aspect of living. Imitation was the key. If you don't have the text, if you don't have the essence of Greek literature, or what do you imitate? Basically, in philosophy, Plato and Aristotle were the two major uh, philosophers uh, that they, they founded, literally, in the Renaissance, they founded two schools, um, two schools based, based on the study of Plato and Aristotle. And if you don't have the text, you have nothing. So Giovanni Aurispa, 14th century, 14th, 15th century. I really like the notion uh, from Gaetano Cipolla that the Renaissance started here during the Norman era. In fact, they did introduce some very cool things into the society. Well, not only with Stupamundi and that crew from Palermo, 
but the Renaissance painters, the early Renaissance painters who influenced some of the greats over here, just unbelievable. And also the poets, the poets here to this day, Sicilian poetry is everybody writes a poem here in Sicily, it seems. <laughs> All right. At this point, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us, for watching us and listening to us talk about really one of our biggest passions, and that is Sicily. And, you know, at a later point, I think I do want to do a whole episode on music, on poetry, and really um, the culture here in Sicily, that part, the artistic part. I want to spend a little bit more time on that going forward. I promised my pal Jim, uh, Jim Ingram, that we would do something on poetry. And we're going to do it, Jim, I promise you that. But we want, kind of wanted to start at the beginning uh, because all the stuff that we do is pretty much teaching people who are watching our programming. A lot of people are not as advanced knowledge-wise. Uh, for example, Esther's a perfect example. The first time she came to Sicily, when I talked to her about it, did you know she had a look on a map? Next, we're going to talk to Professor Tipola about the Sicilian language and its origin. Take a listen. Gaetano, with all these people that have conquered, um, what, is the, what is Sicilian language? Sicilian language is... Uh, <laughs> Uh, you, you, may, you may get some Florentines who don't uh, particularly uh, enjoy the idea, but Sicilian was the first language ever used for poetry in Italy. Dante himself uh, said that for the first, for the first 150 years, uh, this, whatever, what poetry was written in Sicilian, I'm sorry, what poetry was written in Italy was written in Sicilian. And basically, Sicilians uh, created a, the language uh, of literature in Italy. The literary language of Italy basically started with Sicilian under uh, Frederick II, who founded uh, a school known as the, the Sicilian School. You know, people often ask us, do they speak Sicilian or Italian here in Sicily? And the answer is both. A lot of people still speak Sicilian at home with their friends, but Italian is the official language of Sicily. You know something, Esther? Sicilian dialect, there's a, a lot of different dialects. There's not only a di one dialect that everything sounds the same. Palermo dialect is different from over here, but if you go across the strait in Calabria, there's also Sicilian dialect spoken there. So it, 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 remember, there was... And a, different parts of, there the, was a political, of the, different parts of the island, they also speak different dialects. Right, what I was gonna say is, is there's, there was once a political entity known as the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies, and that's why the remnants of Sicilian dialect is spoken in certain parts of the southern Mezzogiorno on the mainland as well. But yes, it's here. Some people say it's dying. I don't say it's dying because no, I, I talk it. about it all the time. You know, and, and my friends, they teach it to their kids. You know, it's not yeah. something that you learn in schools, by the way, although there is a Sicilian language school in Catania. So that's that. I agree 100%. I just think that the work of pr Professor Gaetano Cipolla yeah. has been uh, opening the awareness of things of an intellectual and cultural native uh, a nature to the Sicilian Americans in the United what States of America. Okay, In the United States of America, he's got a huge organization, Abra Secula, and this man has dedicated his entire professional ca career to promoting his love and our love collectively yeah. for Sicily. All right. You know, Esther, there's a lot of help that's been given to us since we started in, back in 2014. I don't know how many videos we have out there. How many videos? Over do we have? 200. We have over 200 videos. And you know who's responsible for us doing that work? You. You've motivated us by watching our videos. You've motivated us by helping for us sure. offset the expenses of the videos that we've done consistently. You've, you've come to the plate, you've become sponsors. This show would not be existing but for you, okay? And well set out. we depend upon you. Uh, like even when you say, okay, a dollar and 99 to be a member of our community, guess what? Every bean fills the pa bag. Yeah, we've thrown in a hundred dollars. Certainly right. heartfelt, heartfelt appreciation for all of you guys helping us on this journey to yep. educate everyone about Sicily. On that note, thank you for spending this time with us. 
Please make sure you hit the like, share it with a friend, and what else? Sabenadiga. God bless you. Arrivederci. Ciao. See you on another video. Ciao.